know, I've been on the road for over a week now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty buggered and waiting for another train to go to another city. But, you know, moments like this, the sun setting, beautiful scenery, I gotta admit, I'm pretty bloody lucky, eh? Next stop on my trip, welcome to Osaka. Osaka is known as Japan's second city. Its most famous historical landmark is the 16th century Osaka Castle. On top of that, it's known for its modern architecture, amazing nightlife and hearty street food. Let's get stuck in. I'm here in Dotonburi, which is one of the dopest parts of Osaka. It's most well known for its bars and its street food. And it's got a local delicacy, which is takoyaki, which is deep fried octopus balls. Yum yum. This is what I'm talking about right here. Six with sauce, please. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is something I've been looking forward to. It sounds pretty grim, fried octopus ball, but it's one of my favourite foods. God, that's good. Got you saw some of that stuff. Awesome. Very good, very good. So I'm here in a small suburb on the outskirts of the city and I've been invited by a local family to experience a Japanese tea ceremony and they're going to give me lunch as well. Now, not very many people get to experience this and I'm absolutely champing at the bit to get in there. Here you are. Yeah. Yes, Jay Ball. Jay Ball. Yes. Yes, Jay Ball. Yes. Pleasure to meet you. I brought you a gift. <laughs> Do you want that? Arigato. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. So I've got an authentic kimono that they're giving me and dressing me in. Oh, oh my hands are stuck. My hands stuck somewhere. <laughs> this is a pretty surreal moment, I'm not gonna lie. I've gotta get through that little door now. So Takashi's fixed me a batch of matcha green tea, which is essentially very, very good for you, very healthy. And he's gone through the whole process just to get me some of it. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay. So now I've got the boiling water. I pour it in with the matcha powder. And just stir it up. Good. Yes. <laughs> Arigato gozaimasu. We've come inside and I'm actually going to be taught how to make okonomiyaki, which is, I guess you could just say, a Japanese pancake. In here we've got cabbage, dry shrimp, the little offshoots mm -hmm. of tempura and squid. But that's essentially the batter for the pancake. This is such an awesome experience for me, being able to make okonomiyaki in a traditional Osaka home. Oh. Nailed it. All right. That's not too bad for my first try, I reckon. Like that. I might start in the middle and work my way out. Arigato gozaimasu. The squid is really good. Mm. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. A home cooked meal is always better. Always better. At least in my opinion. And I don't think anything gets better than okonomiyaki in a traditional Osaka house with a couple of locals. The best. We're here at Hanazono Rugby Stadium in Osaka. It is the oldest rugby-specific stadium in the entire country, having first been opened in 1929. Every year in December, it plays host to the National High School Rugby Tournament, and this ride here is hallowed turf to every rugby player in the country of Japan. So the stadium itself only holds 30 odd thousand seats, but I mean, the equivalent of what Hanazono is to Japanese rugby would be maybe, you know, Eden Park to All Blacks rugby or Twickenham to English rugby. It's the spiritual home of rugby for Japan. Oh, he 
this is not me. me. <laughs> oh, well, that was bloody embarrassing. Best be getting out of here. Next stop, it's the home of the best beef in the world. So we're in a place called Motoko in Kobe. It's essentially a three kilometre strip right here full of small little outlets that sell clothes and food and all that sort of stuff. It was created post-war by the Yakuza of all people. And it was the one place that you could buy meat and so on. And it was actually illegal at the time, but the authorities sort of turned a blind eye. And now it's turned into this three kilometre strip underneath the main train line. Now there's no point coming to Kobe if you're not going to try the world famous Kobe steak and no place does it better than right here at Steakland. I've got my own private chef, my own private room. I can't describe how excited I am to get stuck into some of the best steak in the entire world. So what makes Kobe beef so good? Well, the cows are massaged daily and their diet includes large amounts of beer. So I guess that helps. You have to season it heavily because that's what gives it that crust on the outside as well. I literally just drilled into my beard. Whoops. Mate, it is smelling insane right now. The skill of this bloke, he's just non-stop, but he only moves when he has to move. He's move, 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 clean, 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 then. And then back into it. All right, so I've got my entire Kobe beef steak set right here. I've obviously got the Kobe, we've got some Green sprouts, some shiitake, some konyaku, zucchini, garlic chips, minestrone, salad. We've got soy sauce with some spring onion and some garlic barbecue type sauce, and obviously a beer, so may as well tuck in, shall we? Oh, I'm just gonna try the Kobe straight up with nothing, no sauces. Mm. That's literally one of the best mouthfuls of food I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You know, when you come to Japan, you're going to go to a few weird cafes that have some weird and wild things. Cat cafe, penguin cafe. This one's a reptile cafe. This is my boy, Lewis. And there's a lot of reptiles in here. Snakes, lizards, some frogs. Thank you very much for handing me the lizard. So there seems to be an argument as to which snake they're giving me. Oh, this bloke ain't too bad. Just hold him. Oh, he's so... It's like a big ball of muscle. This is not what I was expecting on a rugby tour to Japan. They're kind of cool when they're not wrapped around your neck. I'm a slippery little snake. <laughs> what do I do? Oh, put him down? All right. There we are. Hmm. Mm. So I've been trying to leave for like an hour now, and every time I go to leave, they keep handing me something new. Watch. Here's your skink. There's your skink back. Oh, all right, cool. Okay, great. Great. I can show you the world. Oh. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Fantastic. All righty. Okay, all right, yep, great, really. Oh, I do actually have to go, but when were these things last fed? Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah, good. This here is Miguel, the monitor lizard. Ooh, it's tight. Oh. Oh, mama. Oh. So, the power of that snake, I could feel it latching on just to hold on to me. And while we're filming, here, check this out. Cameraman Hamish literally had a snake around his neck the entire time. How's it feeling, hey? Yeah, pretty good. It's starting to tighten up. <laughs> that's not a that's not a Texas snake. That's a J Bor snake, mate. Don't go looking at that. So here it is, Masaki Park Stadium in Kobe. It's the home ground of the Japanese top league rugby side Kobe Steelers, which features rugby superstars Dan Carter, Andy Ellis, and Adam Ashley Cooper, just to name a few. I'm pretty pumped up to be here. It's good seeing all these stadiums. They've all got their own little quirks. So I remember when I was uh, 17, I actually made the Australian under-19s side at fly half. We toured Japan, came to Kobe, 
I met a small Japanese geisha, went by Tatsunui. I still think about her. There's no point coming to Kobe and not sniffing the stadium, eh? <sighs> Smells like rugby. Ooh, see the field from here. See where we can find Dan Carter, eh? This is sick. It's got a retractable roof. They're lighting the turf. Must be trying to grow it a bit better. Come to Kobe for the World Cup. Don't even need a ticket. That was easy. Literally a stone's throw from the stadium is what's known as a traditional Japanese onsen. It's essentially a public bath, so you come down with your kids, you got your grandma, your granddad, you all drop trout, you jump in, you splish splash, have a nice little soak and then duck in and watch Dan Carter carve up on the footy field. God, I love this country. Time to have a little soak, shall we? Next stop is the beautiful island of Kyushu. And let's see what's going on in Fukuoka. Fukuoka is the capital city of Fukuoka Prefecture on the northern shore of the Japanese island of Kyushu. And about an hour or so out of Fukuoka city, you can find a place called Yanagawa. I'm currently on the Yanagawa River cruise, and it sure beats all the planes, trains, and automobiles it's taken me to get here. It's good to sit back, relax, and it's a really nice way to take in a beautiful city. My name is Esaki. 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 Jaybor. 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 Yeah, Ripper. Where do you get your big pole from? Oh, right. We're about to go through a small tunnel. And you've got some old, beautiful houses here. It looks like there's a shrine here. Spectacular. The best thing about it being a woman it's a prerogative to have a little fun, fun, fun. All right, so he's giving me a hand on the pole. Within about four seconds, I've actually turned us around the wrong way. We're going backwards. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually turned us into a shrubbery. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it in your capable hands. Cheers, brother. Nailed it. All right, so one of the local delicacies here in Yanagawa is unagi, which is eel. So I'm going to duck in, give it a shot. Yum, yum. So when you come to Yanagawa, there are a number of restaurants that will sell unagi, and you can get it a myriad of ways. I've just gone for very basic grilled unagi on rice. Might get a bit of the old chili flake on there. So you'll see it's been grilled. Typically, it has, you know, a marinade that they'll smear on it after they've cooked it. Really good, really fresh. It's just like any other sort of fresh fish. I guess the best you could sort of compare it to would just be like, you know, salmon, crispy skin salmon. So if you find yourself in Yanagawa, do yourself a favor and try unagi. You won't regret it. That's really good. Japan is unique in that the majority of the population follow two religions, Shintoism and Buddhism. We're standing here in front of a Shinto shrine, which you can identify by these Tori gates, which distinguishes shrines from temples. Just across the street from Fukuoka Station, right in the heart of the city. It's known for its shopping, its bars, and of course, its restaurants. Across the entire country, you can find these things. They're known as Yatai, and Fukuoka is absolutely renowned for it. They sell booze and food, and I'm gonna duck in and have myself a little treat. All right, so we've got what's known as Oden Daikon. A daikon type of radish, I believe. I'll tell you what, the atmosphere is great, the beer's cold, the food's fantastic. If you're in Fukuoka, drop on in, you'll absolutely love it. Come by? Come by!
We're here at Fukuoka Hakatona Mori Stadium in Fukuoka. It's a 22,000 seat stadium that'll play host to four matches throughout the World Cup 2019. It's a sculpture called Pim Pam Poom by Federica Marta. So this stadium is actually unlocked from the looks of things. Hello? Hello? Sweet ass, let's go on the field, eh? Hello? All right, there's no one here. Goody! That was pretty cool. One-handed pick up, Staunton on the toe. Staunton, let's bounce. Everybody stops. Staunton. Try time. Staunton, baby. I'm blowing. But I won the World Cup, so it's all good. Footy's hard, eh? Footy is hard. For some, but not me. We are one step closer to the end. Next stop. Kumamoto. Kumamoto is a major city on Kyushu's western coast with a population of around 650 odd thousand people and they are deeply proud of their most traditional landmark, Kumamoto Jo, a castle that the entire city radiates around. So after the 2016 Kumamoto earthquake, it did get damaged, so that's why there is some scaffolding and cranes there. But it's not every day you get to see a 16th century castle in the middle of a thriving city. It is humming. It's 8.30 at night, and there's a ton of people here, but every shop is open, be it clothes, be it restaurants, be it bars, and it is absolutely fizzing right now. Now, Kumamoto is known for a delicacy known as Sakura Niku, which stands for cherry blossom meat. But we just call it horse. Yum, yum. Alrighty, so here it is. When it's served like this with just a bit of soy, some garlic, some onion, it's known as basashi. Here goes nothing, eh? Mm. Oh, rock on. Who'd have thought raw horse meat would taste so bloody good? It's sort of a mix between something a bit gamey and beef. Anyone know where else is known for its basashi? Tonga. Tonga are playing France at Kumamoto Stadium at the World Cup, so if you've got a hankering, or a bit of old horse meat, duck on in. All right, so if you come to Kumamoto, you've got to try a traditional Japanese drink called shochu. We've heard this place is one of the best, evidenced by the fact that a shochu bottle is their door handle. Let's duck in. I'm Jay Moore. I'm Nori. Nori, thank you for coming. Yeah, mate. I've heard you man talk to in regards to shochu. Thank you for coming. Yeah, man. One glass yeah. of whatever shochu you recommend. Can I serve you sweet potato shochu? Yep. Any what, mate? Yeah, oh. nice. Yeah, nice. I recommend you to drink this one. Bloody oath. Yeah, nice. Come pie. Let's fill it. That's pretty bloody good, actually. It's similar to. You know, do you know port, like sherry and stuff like that? Port, sherry, sort of... It's got that sort of vibe, but without the intense flavour. It's a bit smoother. <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. We're here at Kumamoto Stadium on the outskirts of Kumamoto City. It's a 32,000 seat stadium that'll play host to two matches at the Rugby World Cup. And despite only being 32 odd thousand seats, the stadium is absolutely enormous and will be a perler of a venue to watch a bit of footy. Check it out, there's literally hundreds of crows flying across the stadium here. All up in the light tower on these supporting wires and there's still more coming. We're actually on the 11th stadium on this tour and I'm still in awe at just how beautiful the stadiums are in Japan. I mean, this one in particular, Kamamoto Stadium, it's meant to be only a 32,000 seater, but it still looks stunning. We're sitting in a chopper, about to go up and around and do a circuit around 
with Mount Aso, one of Japan's largest active volcanoes. I'm not necessarily nervous, but I'm nervously excited because I've never been in a chopper before, so we'll see if we can hold 115 kilos right in shotgun, eh? We're ready. Let's do it. This is unreal. 70% of Japan is actually covered by its native forest. It's such a huge population that it wouldn't have such beautiful scenery, but look at this. Up on Mount Aso now, and you can see it right there, bubbling away. You've got all the gas. This is ridiculous. We're coming on a pretty heavy sledge straight down. Around the edge, staring straight into the volcano. <laughs> Bloody good was that? Coming in for the landing. Literally up sheer metres from the crater of an active volcano flying through sulphur clouds. You can smell it. If you don't come to Japan to do that, you're kidding yourself. Time to hit the final leg on our amazing tour. Welcome to the beautiful city of Oita. We're here in Beppu, which is about half an hour outside of Oita city, which is known for its water sports, its onsens, which has got over 2,000 of, and one of its main attractions is just over here, which is a hot sand bath. They bury you in the local sand up to your neck so your head is the only thing exposed and it's meant to feel like you've just had a full body massage. Now one thing you have to do in Oita City is come to this place right here, City Spa. It's a Japanese onsen, which is essentially a traditional Japanese spa. This one right here is 19 floors up, absolutely fantastic views of the city and it's one of the most relaxing places in the world. One rule, however, is you have to drop for out completely. So, no cameras allowed, but I'm going to go up and see what all the commotion's about. <laughs> so if you ever come to Oita, there's one place you have to go, and it's known as an izakaya. It's the closest you can get to a pub. Cheap food, cold beers, and the Atmos is absolutely fizzing. Let's duck in and get stuck in. Why not ask the people that run it exactly what is an izakaya? Our izakaya basically is about uh, bringing people from Oita, bringing the food from Oita, everything, and combining it together and giving the best food that we can to the people of Oita. Thank you very much. Might as well get into it, eh? Oh, if there's one thing the Japanese do well, it's beer. And an izakaya is the best place to it. Here it is, the final stadium on our tour, the 40,000 seat Oita Stadium. It'll play host to two quarterfinals as well as a handful of group matches at the Rugby World Cup and was designed by world-renowned Japanese architect Kisho Kurokawa. You can see up here the retractable roof, so this is one of three stadiums at the Rugby World Cup that will have a retractable roof. And one of the best things about the Rugby World Cup, at least in my opinion, especially for the southern island of Kyushu, is that the local prefectures are spending a lot of money revamping and upgrading a lot of the stadiums. So places like this, Kumamoto and Fukuoka, will probably have some of the best facilities at the 2019 Rugby World Cup. That's it, what an absolutely epic journey. I've got to say a big thank you to all of the people I met along the way. The people of Japan have to be some of the kindest and most genuine you will find anywhere, and this country is truly magical. If you're even slightly considering coming to Japan for the Rugby World Cup, do not hesitate, as I guarantee it will be the trip of a lifetime. And from a personal point of view, it is the best thing I've ever done. Ah, I have heard this. Ah.